Today, we're honored to host our new Mayor Lacey Beatty from the city of Beaverton. The presentation will be recorded and it'll be later available via Impact Beaverton YouTube channel as a resource for small businesses. We will um, also make the Spanish audio available through our talented interpreter, Aurelio Abarca Flores, joining us today. Gracias, gracias Aurelio. After the presentation, we will open up for Q&A. Um, and so, Welcome, Lacey. <laughs> Always an honor to know more about you and, and all of the wonderful work that you're doing. I have a few questions for you. Um, and so, so I'll just start and then I'll open up for everybody else. I'm sure everyone has pressing questions for you. Um, so far, um, what has been the best part of your new, of your new role as mayor of Beavers? Wow, um, I think a lot of things, but what's really nice is to have one job. So before I split my time, as uh, many of you may or may not know, I was the director of school-based health centers at Virginia Garcia Memorial Health Center, which is a big job by itself. So doing that, splitting my time there and being a city councilor, it was a lot to juggle. You know, when I was first elected, uh, my daughter wasn't born yet. And so it was my husband and I, and it was a little bit easier to do a ton of nights and evenings and meetings. And then when we had our daughter, it became a little bit harder to prioritize family time when my time to do city work was after my regular work. Um, and so running for mayor was really hard for the year, but this year of having one job means I can focus my energy in one direction. Um, I still work a ton of hours because you know this job is it requires a lot, but um, my my focus is uh, on the city, which is a really nice place to be. I'm not always kind of having my foot half in one door and half in the other. I have a similar experience with you know being a mom of four, and I think many of us also have to figure out how to juggle you know. Um, our family and our personal our personal time and also you know, juggling our um, responsibilities, our many responsibilities and many hats that we wear as a, as a business owner. So it's always impressive that you can do all that and still do such great work, you know, and still be able to bring impact in our community. One of the exercises I typically do when I meet um, a new business for the first time is I always ask um, about setting personal uh, goals as well as business goals. And um, it's always, a, um, of course, a balancing act, right? Trying to figure out between personal, family, and business. Those three things are very important. Um, whether it's you take five minutes out of your day um, to just reflect before you go into your home and take care of your family's, family's uh demands <laughs> or you know also your business and how do you how do you stay healthy so we we've also seen you graciously uh, lead our city um, in so many different capacities even before mayor um, with your precious daughter and what advice would you give us today to stay focused while ach while achieving our business goals it's a great question um so I always laugh because people always ask me like, how do you balance things? And uh, I don't believe in balance. I think sometimes you're a really good business person and sometimes you're probably a really good parent and sometimes you're a really terrible spouse and sometimes you're just, you know, but I, what I do believe is in focused energy. So an intention of where I'm at and what I'm doing. And, you know, I'm a, uh, I don't know, you guys may or may not know this. I was in a ski accident like six weeks ago, like two weeks into being mayor and had to have emergency surgery. And um, we're really outdoorsy, my family and I. And so, you know, we work out a lot. I'm a military veteran. So I still carve out time. We have a Peloton in our house every day. Um, I work out even if I don't want to. Um, it's just, it doesn't have to be a lot. I mean, last night we went for a four mile walk because I didn't have an evening meeting. But when I do that, I try to focus like when I'm with my family, I'm with them. And when I'm at city council, I'm, I'm with them. But I think it's okay too that sometimes those roles overlap. My husband is a full-time National Guard officer. And so he's doing a lot with vaccine rollout. So we make a deal. Like if we, we went to the coast overnight last week with my daughter because she wanted to go swim in a pool and eat Fruit Loops. That was my three-year-old's request and we're busy parents. So, you know, I also wanted to swim in a pool and eat Fruit Loops. So we took her out there. Um, I agreed that my husband could work on the drive out and that I would work on the drive back the next day. And so 
we, you know, I think we're upfront with each other about um, our, our life and how busy we are. And I think we make good room. And, and if one of us says, you know, I need you to focus or listen to me, we do it. But I think sometimes we beat ourselves up and, you know, I, as a business owner, like there's no one else besides you. So if you don't do it, then who's left to do it. But I think being intentional with your time is where I would start and get, cut yourself some slack if we're not the best at everything. Absolutely. I agree. I think we all agree. We do tend to be pretty hard on ourselves. We have so many expectations, probably greater expectations for ourselves than even others do, right? Um, so I am going to open it up to anybody that wants to ask a question. I know that Tyrone is going to be going to another meeting. Do you have a question for, uh, for Lacey Beatty? Yeah, thank, thank you, Emma, and thank you for putting this on, and thank you for all the great work that you do, Emma. I really appreciate you uh, as a person and what you stand for in the community. And I, we are just so um, beside ourselves to have, have our first woman mayor. Thank you so much, and especially for all of the flags that you raise, one of them being one of dear to my heart, which is the minority women and emerging small business and service disabled veteran contractors. So right then and there, uh, I think Mayor Beatty and I, when I first met her, that, that was a, a connection for me. And uh, if there's anything that I could ever do to lend a hand um, with Cheryl and, and um, um, other folks that I know over there at City of Beavers and please don't hesitate to um, ping me on that. Thank you, Tyrone. Absolutely. It's the MWESB is so important and the opportunities for our small businesses to, um, to get certified and, and know of all the benefits, right, that come with that as a business owner. Tyrone, we are so grateful. Um, for your leadership in at Energy Trust of Oregon, but also support continuing to uh, support our um, our contractors. Um, we've heard um, lots of uh, great impact that you've you've done, especially bringing the education and bringing uh, those contractors together, um, and so that we can work together and uh, and serve our community in so many different ways. We are also very grateful for the. Uh, opportunities that you've brought uh, to the city of Beaverton as well and staying uh, in relationship with us. Thank you, Tyrone. Thank you. Uh, I just want to second uh, what Tyrone mentioned about uh, Emma. You've done uh, an excellent job in terms of putting together uh, specifically on the um, uh, side of the immigrant side and putting them together in the, all the educational materials and also programs that you had. Uh, and also, uh, uh, I want to congratulate uh, our mayor first. <laughs> this is the first time I think I've uh, met her via yeah, Zoom. Uh, the question that I have is um, to the mayor, of course. Uh, given that there is a large number of uh, immigrants in, uh, in the Beaverton area, uh, more specifically also immigrants, but are also a business people. Uh, are there any uh, specific programs or are there any programs in general that uh, would encourage or that would help this uh, community, you know, as far as um, support is concerned from the city of Beaverton? Like specific, specifically for business? Yes. Well, I think I'm gonna have to phone a friend on that one. And luckily Mike uh, Williams is here to answer that. That was unintentional, but he, uh, you know, good leaders surround themselves by good people. So instead of just stumbling through it, I'll let, I'll let Mike answer that. Thanks for being here, Mike. You didn't know you were part of the program. Yeah, well, that, 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 that happens. Yeah, thank, thank you, Mayor. Um, yeah, in order to address that, a lot of the work that we're doing, um, especially with our immigrant communities, communities are through partnerships, and we like to partner with the likes of with the likes of Emma, and I know Gustavo has been an important part of this, and also we have a partnership with with Miso, um, with partners that have specific competencies, right? Um, whether it's cultural competencies or whether it's technical competencies, like Emma's ability to connect and help and help small businesses. So. Um, a lot of that has been through 
um, technical assistance as of late. And, and you can ask Emma, um, I'm always open to a new idea and for piloting and trying out and funding new things. Um, before the pandemic, um, the mayor and city council um, um, put a little bit of my budget to help out with um, individual development accounts. And we were gonna start up um, sort of a, a counseling program to help more Beaverton businesses get into those IDAs through the various, through the various channels. With the pandemic that got a little sidelined um, and we've been doing a lot of kind of direct grants to businesses and, and direct help to businesses. So, um, so we're, we're open to new ideas. Um, a lot of what we do is around technical assistance, um, but um, we, do have, um, we do have Emma and Gustavo here at Impact and the BRC, as well as working with MISO who has some financial programs as well um, and assistance to help, help companies. But like I said, I'm always open to new ideas. Just ask Emma. We plot a lot um, and try to come up with, with, with pilots and new ways to, to best mm -hmm. serve the community. Thank you, Mike. And I, to add to that, some of our partners that we work with are ERCO and um, ERCO as well as Community Action. Um, they are two programs they are, that are supported by the city of Beaverton in order to provide um, a lot of resources to finding, um, uh, finding, for instance, credit building workshops. Uh, some of those are offered through those two nonprofits, um, rental assistance as well, um, and, and many other things, including um, uh, support with utilities, especially during the pandemic. Um, I do, uh, they are on my list of re referrals when anybody is looking for any, any kind of service uh, for their families. Um, and then further, of course, you know, we have other services through uh, Metropolitan Family Services, Catholic Charities, NIA, um, and uh, which are many of them are providers of the IDA, the Individual Development Account, which is the savings uh, matching grant, uh, which is a huge resource for uh, a business owner um, uses, uh, they save three th up to $3,000 and they can get matched $9,000. And that is to build assets. And, um, and this is a state grant. Um, there are many different types of grants. The, there are many different types of IDAs that you can get. Um, one of them is for a small business to purchase equipment, technology, things like that for your businesses. So you do have to show how those purchases are gonna grow your business, but you can also use it to purchase your first home. And another program that's very well supported by the city of Beaverton is Cash Oregon and also Portland Housing Center, uh, which helps you to, um, it helps, Cash Oregon helps you with tax prep, especially for folks who, um, um, where their income is 80% median income or lower, that is usually the requirement for the IDA. Um, and the IDA can also be purchased to, uh, um, could be used to purchase adaptive technology, um, your first home, uh, vehicle, uh, and many other things. Um, and it's, it's fairly flexible. The requirements are, um, you do need to be part of some education, some sort of growth, like uh, some finan financial liter literacy courses through some of the IDA providers. And more information can be found under idainitiative.org. Um, we do work closely with uh, many of these um, organizations so that we can refer our business owners who are seeking those, those uh, services, those resources. Um, yeah, and, and the beauty of the pilot that, that Emma put together, it, it wasn't really the city's money that was matching for the IDA. It was just us helping um, helping the community access all of the, the IDA providers. Um, um, and there, there's a number of them. And uh, um, Emma, Emma identified a gap in that many of the, the, the businesses were falling, were not getting enough counseling and enough help in, in terms of the application process. And so it was, it was really a leverage play. Um, and um, and I, I thought it was quite good and we'll probably get back to that at some point. Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, we also work with um, Mercy Corps Northwest is another, uh, it's a, they are another IDA provider and um, 
they have acknowledged um, our workshops. Um, one of the workshops, Dr. Techley, was yours through uh, Import and Export um, 101 for small businesses. And that, that type of education is very important for a small business to sit that industry. And it does um, meet the, um, it, it does meet the credits, the credits needed in order to um, move to the next step of the IDA withdrawal. Um, so we do rely on, on our community partners, including Adelante Mujeres as well, um, to uh, make sure that our businesses can have so many different places to go so that they can meet their goals. They can meet their personal goals and their business goals as well. Thank you, very, very good question. Thank you, Mike, for your help. Uh, you're welcome to just raise your hand or you can use the little, oh, go ahead, Veronica. Can we ask a question in Spanish? Are, uh, is the mayor gonna be able to understand the question? Probably not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can you interpret it, yeah. <laughs> well, um, I would like to ask you first, well, first of all, uh, it was great to see you again. Um, and what are your priorities now in this new government and how are you gonna implement those uh, strategies, especially when you're doing a community engagement? Great question. Um, I think right now my focus um, is the team captain of the city council. We are in the process of hiring a new city manager. We have an interim, a temporary one, uh, but that's probably one of the most important hires we'll do in the next four to eight years. And so spending the time to get it right, making sure that we have great qualified applicants. Um, the city manager and the mayor are like brother and sister. We, we do different things, but we're the chief executives of the city. So making sure we have the ability to work together is really important. Um, beyond that, that's kind of internal. That's not very sexy, but it's really practical. And it's really important to our community that we get that position right. On the policy side, uh, implementing our climate action committee is something um, we just approved two weeks ago. Um, making sure that um, a lot of our membership that we'll be selecting will be under the age of 30. That's really underrepresented in our other boards and commissions is important to me. Uh, making sure that we have a good cross section of um, uh, BIPOC community uh, leaders that are also on that. We're looking at community policing and really through the lens of do we have the right people doing the right work? So asking ourselves like, you know, do we have enough? Do we want to do more in mental health services? Do we want to do more addressing our homeless population? So making sure we do that work that makes sense and bringing people to the table is really important. Um, you know, for me, expanding uh, our downtown uh, Beaverton has been something I've been working on for a long time, making sure that our businesses are supported so they, they can thrive here. We know that COVID has been hard on a lot of our community. And so how do we recover? Um, I coordinated one of the largest public private vaccine clinics at Nike to make sure that community members can be vaccinated right here in our own community. Because if you're a business owner um, or a small proprietor of business, you're not gonna go all the way out to the airport or downtown Portland. You can't miss that many hours of work. Like you just can't. My work at Virginia Garcia taught me that, that you know, we gotta make things available and accessible. So making sure, um, making sure that we're able to uh, deliver vaccines right here, that's the key to opening up businesses. So that is the most important thing besides hiring a city manager. And maybe going along with that, uh, your answer, uh, you said that you're gonna be hiring people. Are you thinking to have more diversity in uh, terms of staff or people in working for, for the city? Yeah, so in our change of government shift, the city council only gets to hire three people, the city manager, the judge, and the city attorney. Of course, I have some staff that work directly for the mayor, but two. Um, but we are working towards that. The council looks at all of those reports every year on how many people interviewed versus how many people uh, applied versus how many we hired. They're not great statistics. Mm -hmm. So we do need to work on that. And so it's been a, a priority of the council to do that. Thank you, Veronica. She's been doing a fantastic job uh, helping Gustavo with uh, business um, outreach, um, letting people know about the work that we're doing here in the city of Beaverson for our small businesses. And I really appreciate you, Veronica, for um, being such an expert with, um, with 
getting the message out to our community and letting them know, especially um, about the grants that were coming in uh, this last year um, for businesses affected by COVID. Uh, we really did appreciate um, the way that you portrayed that message and the way that, um, um, and, and how the Latino community views you as a leader and as a leader of providing the information that is valuable to, to them as well. Thank you, Veronica, great question. Well, Mayor Betty, thank you very much and uh, congratulations uh, on uh, winning the election. I, I know I am excited to have the opportunity to continue working uh, as a volunteer for the city of Beaverton. Uh, the last uh, six years, or, or with the Diversity Advisory Board. This year as a, as a member of the URAC. And last night, actually, we had a good meeting where uh, some people were talking about the, some of the developing uh, or the developments that have occurred in Beaverton. And also with the uh, uh, restaurant uh, strategy of uh, bringing more opportunities to uh, businesses uh, to the Beaverton area. As obviously as a citizen of Beaverton, I'm very excited about all of those opportunities. The one thing that I did miss last night on that meeting, as I said to uh, the people there was names of specifically Latinx owned businesses coming to the area. I didn't hear any. And so that was a little bit uh, worrisome to me I don't know that there are very many uh, BIPOC owned restaurants that are given the opportunity to come to Beaverton and showcase their, uh, their food. And so there, there needs to be a strategy that includes some of those for sure. And uh, also part of the, uh, the meeting last night was, uh, uh, like I said, the uh, development areas. And uh, another concern there is gentrification. Some of these beautiful buildings, I mean, uh, I wanna move there, sell my house and maybe move it to one of those apartments. They look really nice, but I don't think there is enough uh, affordable housing. I mean, those, those units are, are, like I said, very nice and everything, but are we maybe uh, getting into some areas that we need to maybe talk a little bit more uh, and, and make or do more about uh, affordable housing. Yeah, there's a lot there. Um, I agree with you on the business recruitment and strategy. I know during periods of racial unjust this summer, I asked the chamber for a list of uh, black owned businesses. So my family and I could be, um, you know, if we're gonna go out to eat, can we support a black owned business? And there wasn't even that list. So I think first we measure what we treasure, right? And so pulling our demographics in a way so we at least know where the starting point is, is something I've been working with our team on doing now. So that way we can be intentional sometimes with how we, you know, the city doesn't have, we don't do a lot um, obviously this year with COVID, but we do do a fair amount of contracting for services like meals for boards and commissions, things like that. So how do we make sure that the money that the city is using we're intentional with our goals. So that one, I think we have to measure what we treasure to your point of, I couldn't even tell you how many Latinx owned businesses there are. So I think we should work on that. Um, that doesn't, and you know, I don't know our, our current business makeup. So that information would be helpful for us as a starting point. So we could recruit to our weakness to make sure we're bringing in businesses that are more reflective of the community. Um, and the housing thing, I, I wholeheartedly agree with you. As you know, it, uh, I've been working on affordable housing as long as I've been elected here. Um, and it's it's tools in the toolbox. There's no one size fits all. You know, I spent a whole entire year working with our park district to waive system development charges, which if you're a business owner on this call that owns a building, you know what those are. They're very expensive fees uh, when we build things. The city has a practice of waiving those fees for deeply affordable housing, but our partners did not. And so we spent a whole year doing that and that could represent millions of dollars per building. Um, that's one step in the toolbox of doing it. The city itself writes down property taxes to try to get three to six affordable units per building. But we know countywide we're 14,000 doors short of affordable housing for our community. 
I mean, just in the 12 years that I've lived in Oregon, when we first moved here, our rent was 800 for a three bedroom house. And you couldn't find that now. I mean, you my sister had to move, she's a server at Elmer. She had to move from an apartment by Nike that tripled in rent all the way out to Gales Creek, but still commutes in to work. So I, I mean, I wish that I had a, the politician side of me should just wrap it up in a bow and say, we're working on it, but we're not even like we're, we are, but we need to do a lot more. And so I didn't want to, you know, go down a wrong path here, but every single building we're doing, we're asking those questions. And sometimes it's hard because it comes at community expense. You know, I held a town hall last week about what's happening on Fifth Avenue. We're putting in a deeply affordable senior housing project directly across the street from the library. That's going to be the first time we've targeted seniors. We've never chosen a place where people can age in place gracefully. Or if you've lived here your whole life, you should be able to afford to live here in your retirement. But the city only owns a handful of pieces of property and to make something like that work, we had to build on something we already owned, which is the community center. And I think when people hear community center, they think thriving place of community. That's not what this building was. It was very underutilized, but I think the, like the, uh, what people think we were doing is taking down this building that everyone loved and doing something else. So for us to meet these goals of affordable housing, it comes with a different level of sacrifice. And that's the hardest part about being an elected official. We are very fortunate that um, through the help of the also Washington County, we were able to uh, multiply um, our outreach and the work that we're doing here for our businesses, for our small businesses. And um, I tend to be a nerd in collecting data. And uh, one of the things I've been able to do is uh, um, track that kind of data of minority owned businesses in our community. And um, uh, Lacey, uh, I'd be happy to share um, to share that information that you're seeking um, with businesses that identify as minority owned businesses. I can tell you that out of the 350 plus businesses that are actively seeking our resources, 72% of them identify as minority owned. And so we do have that information and I'd be very happy to share that information with you, Lacey, so that we can start having those conversations. Yeah, and just to tell you, um, with, with, with our COVID response and our grants, 66% um, um, of our grants went to minority owned businesses. Um, and um, we did that through, um, through extensive outreach, but I also just think it's reflective of the type of businesses we were trying to help because we were really trying to help Main Street businesses, businesses that were doing um, in-person services or, or, or selling, selling things um, on site. Um, and in terms of the COVID response, um, it was 66% um, persons of color owned businesses. And then um, a little bit over half were, were women owned businesses. In terms of what you were saying about gentrification and the changes that are happening in, in Beaverton, um, we hear you fully. Um, and I know the community development is also embarking on the downtown equity strategy. Um, and it's to make sure that it's urban renewal, urban renewal investments. Um, reflect the, the, the diversity in the community. And I think it's a great business opportunity. I mean, I, I want to just position, um, I would like to see uh, Beaverton position as, as like the most diverse place to come live and shop and, and do business. Um, I think it's a real opportunity to make, to make Beaverton really stick out um, region wide. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that strategy, which is going to look at two things. Um, it's going to look at how we can um, how we can both uh, cater to our diverse population and all the different um, needs of that population, as well as try to find and recruit uh, new businesses as well to come into the into the area. Um, that's just getting going, and um, I'm expecting you, if you're on you're on the uh, the diversity advisory board. Um, that, that you'll be hearing a lot more about that, that effort and that initiative. And Oswaldo, you're always, you're always welcome and invited to mm -hmm. join us here. Every Tuesday, we meet here and, um, and we get to have those discussions. And most of the time, it's educational for small businesses, but we do try to set some time for you know, new updates uh, that are 
for us is new grants and new loans and things like that that are um, uh, new opportunities for our small businesses. And, um, and we're able to ask any questions um, on, on how to support those small businesses. So we do, uh, we are pretty active in our community. And this is a platform that we, that's open to our community every Tuesday at 12 o'clock. We've been doing this <laughs> since uh, uh, May of 2000. Um, 20, wow, we missed the whole year. <laughs> and then before that we were meeting in person and we had a Spanish uh, a Spanish workshop and an English workshop. And so we have found a way to uh, come together. Um, I'd like to open up the opportunity uh, for uh, any folks that would like to ask a question in Spanish. I do apologize. We do have a, a logistical issue with um, not being able to have simultaneous uh, translating, but um, we do have a translator here, uh, Aurelio, um, would you uh, assist us with any questions that we may have? Um, si alguien aquí este, tiene una pregunta que quisiera este, dirigir a nuestro alcalde, este, por favor puede levantar la mano, Aurelio este, enseguida este, le puede ayudar a interpretar, este, nomás les pido que este, de haga su pregunta un poco despacio y quizás una pausa después, así le da la oportunidad a Aurelio para que pueda hacer su pregunta. Gracias y bienvenidos. a uh, Miguel. Buenas tardes a todos. Uh, gusto, en conocer, gusto en conocerla mayor. Este, if you guys don't mind, I can speak in English as well. Uh, I wanna just to, to give you the feeling what I'm going through right now as a business owner. Uh, my wife and I, we own a, a successful daycare here in Beaverton. We are rated five stars by the Oregon State. Um, but we been seeing the need to for a, for a quality daycares. Um, but we cannot succeed or find a way to to keep growing because of the lack of the lack of um of numbers so we can we cannot be helped uh, we belong to the minority uh immigrant population but there is a lot of a lot of obstacles in the way in order to to try to succeed as a business it feels like we want to put we we want to be held into the bucket of of uh the low income part. And that's understandable, but we're being kind of excluded because for example, the individual uh, developmental accounts, the IDA from Oregon, the initiative, um, it only allows help for people who is a first home buyers. So we cannot even go through that way because any help that we can get through, uh, we not qualify. We are already try many things, but we are kind of, kind of squish in between. And I understand uh, the Oregon, uh, the IDA initiative from Oregon is to help uh, to help people who wants to start a business. But um, what about us that we've been trying so hard for to, to keep growing? Uh, it feels like we cannot go seeking for more. It's like being pushed and keep it held in the bucket. Um, I, to I totally understand where you're coming from. My dad owns a mid-sized construction company, has my whole life. Um, when the recession hit in 2008, um, he sold off a ton of equipment to keep his staff on to through those really hard months and then slowly started to was able to build back after they like second mortgage their personal house and all of their equipment um he made too much to qualify for any help and um you know wasn't low income he could he could have let everyone go and maybe qualified differently and then when covid hit um my dad had been in business for over 20 years i had to help him do like emergency loans to keep his employees on and it was the most and he's in California and we're here. And I have uh, a friend, Ashley, whose dad's a painter that just went through the same thing. 
I, we have to be able to do more for the mid range. And we really focus a lot on low income because we always assume that you're like, the assumption is if you're starting from scratch, you're low income, but that's not always the case. So um, I'm interested, you know, Mike and I are interested in learning more about some of the hurdles you face, particularly in childcare. We don't know how to solve that issue. It's a really big problem we're looking towards. Um, we have a daycare desert here that's insane. And we have place, you know, you and your wife trying to do more work. So if you could maybe, if Mike and I can maybe meet with you for 15 minutes in the next week or two to kind of hear more about some of the barriers particularly you're facing, that would I be love, helpful for us. I love to because uh, um, I've been asked to participate also on the Beaverton City Paolo, I think Paolo, he sent me a, a link because I, I was belonging to a Bolt group. Yeah. The and and I sent the because I have a lot of lot of things to talk about, but um for sure if I can use some some of my 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 ex personal experiences that can reflect on the community, I will be happy to. I'm 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 willing to. Well, I appreciate I, can, I, I, can, I can give you my email, my phone number. However, you can call me or contact me at any time. And there is a lot of, lot of things that can be uh, changed to make Beaverton great, greater than already are. And that will be impacting not just us as a family, but our workers as, as well. I agree. And I think Emma can help connect you to us. But we're, we're going to be talking about child care a lot in the next month and so bringing together you and maybe I know you probably have peers uh, that we could do some information from that would be helpful because uh, we've identified what a need it is for child care here so to hear a child care provider struggling with growth while we're facing pressure of a lifetime I mean we we've been waitlisted with my own daughter in multiple multiple places so I know Mike and I can, um, we would appreciate, we would, I know you're really busy, so we'll take as little of time as possible, but I think Emma can connect us and we can work on that. So thank you for being here today. Yes, and, and, and just to re, uh, let you know, the work we're, that we're doing is now it's double because now the requirements for, for health are, are bigger. I understand the first line of attention is the doctors and 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 the and helpers and all the staff from the medical field. That's the first line. But guess who's taking care of their children? So we are on the same line, but behind them, supporting them. So let, let let's if we can look a little bit to our way, um, they can maybe find some things that you will be beneficial for the whole community. I agree. And sometimes just hearing about it helps us solve it. I mean, we try really hard. We have a really great team. That doesn't mean we do everything to the best of our ability. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Miguel. And of course, we always love to hear that you're having success during a pandemic. Uh, some of our businesses that are having success, just so amazing to hear that. And, and I know that specifically your daycare is having success, not just because of the need, but also because you provide a great customer service to your little ones that you take care of. And I know that I would trust my tiny ones if I had my tiny ones at that age where they needed daycare. Thank you, Miguel. Uh, you and your wife have done such a fantastic job taking care of our little ones. And we do hope that we can work together so that we can help you expand uh, so that you can uh, impact more of those little ones, and um, which is so important to us, right? Um, yeah, 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 yes. Thank you. Thank you, Emma. And thank you, Mayor. Uh, and it was because it was a tough decision to, to really consider if it was worth it to risking our lives through the pandemic because every child means a potential uh, um, spread of the virus. Every family, each kid contact their family and their family have many other contacts. So the spread could be easily potentially increased. We was at big risk, and, but we're trying, trying our best. Thank you, Miguel. 
So, uh, alguna otra pregunta que tenemos de nuestra comunidad latina. This happens every time we have someone new, <laughs> but after a while, okay. after a while, okay. Lacey, everyone is going to know everything about your personal and your business. <laughs> and, and, uh, <laughs> and I, I think, think that like everyone knows everything about me after running for a year and having our, our personal life under a microscope and how we operate and do just know, like, you know, um, I think sometimes when you're a business owner and you're looking at elected a government, it's just sometimes you feel like you don't have direct access to people. And I want you to know, I'm going to put my personal cell phone number here in the box. Like you can call me anytime. Um, I might not have the right answer. I might have to defer you to somebody else. But I think the only door in government, you should only have to walk through one door in government. You know, we're here to support you and what you need. We're trying, like I said, but that, you know, sometimes trying in the, in the wrong direction is not always helpful. But, um, you know, for me, I ran and I promised that I would focus on small businesses and not developers and not big businesses, which is what I've done. My first month in office, I did nothing but visit small businesses and went on a walking tour and met people where they were and talked about um, their family. And, you know, I had this really amazing experience with the family cafe on in downtown. I don't know if anyone's been there. The guy that owns that place was the mayor of Baghdad, Iraq. And I just had, you know, of all of the things that we could have talked about, we talked about our children and why we were doing the work that we did and why he chose to come here to grow his business and why America and why not stay where he was. And every single one of you and your businesses represent that same feeling of America and we can do better and we can, we can do things here. My job is to help make the playing field level to support you in the work that you're doing. And we all have our why, whether it's your, your spouse or your children or you're wanting to give back to our community. Every business has a story. And I've been able to share his story so many times because it totally caught me off guard. I wasn't expecting it. I was expecting to tell him about all of the great things that the city does to help business. And instead, he spent 20 minutes telling me about his leadership and how I could do good better and um, just this common ground and business after business that we went into, it was about, I'm, I'm here because of my kids and my family and we chose Beaverton for X, Y, and Z. And so just know I'm here to listen. You can call me anytime. As soon as I get off this call, you wanna answer, ask a question, you can email my office. You want me to come see your business and, and meet you where you are and learn more about you or your struggle so I can talk about it? Totally willing to do that. I mean, you guys are the reason Beaverton exists and you stayed open during pandemics and you found a way and it wasn't easy and it wasn't pretty and your family sacrificed more than we will probably ever know. Your own health, your own safety, to make food, to have daycares open, to do all of the things that you're doing. Um, so thank you for choosing Beaverton. Thank you for engaging in programs like this and just keep talking to us. You know, Emma is an amazing communicator for you. Um, so is Mike. There are the lifelines out there, but we have a lot more work to do. So just thank you for letting me be a part of your day. Thank you for doing uh, business in Beaverton. And that's legit my cell phone number. Call me anytime. Thank you, Lacey. I just have one more question, and I think this is from Gustavo. I think Gustavo is really excited that I told him that you live in Allen Boulevard, and that is where where he has built, you know, his strong relationships with some of the businesses there uh, doing outreach. Go ahead, Gustavo. Hello, Lacey Mayor. Uh, nice to meet you. And uh, I, I have a little question. Uh, what has been your experience with our small business businesses throughout um, Beaverton? Wonderful. Every, I mean, every time you walk into a small business, you're walking into somebody's life story. Um, I live off Marine Allen. Every Friday night, we eat at Rico Taco, Taco Truck that's parked in Allen Market. We have for years. Everyone knows that in the baby house, it's Burrito Friday from the Taco Truck. 
Um, and we have all kinds of people out there and we have such great small restaurants and businesses and um, that stayed open during the entire pandemic. Everyone is friendly, you know, everywhere I go, I've never felt unsafe in our neighborhood. I moved to Beaverton after I got out of the army because I wanted to feel safe in my house. I wanted to recover from war and I wanted to have a community and that's why I chose to live here. And I think for some of the same reasons you guys live here, it's awesome. There's lots of great businesses um, and there's a lot more than, you know, and I'm, I'm really thankful that we don't have a lot of chains here, chain restaurants. We have a lot of small family owned businesses. Um, you know, we, we had Easter dinner. My mom really wanted Mexican food and everything was like a long line. So San Francisco's market on Allen, we went in back to back counter and ordered fajitas to go from there and tamales. So I think, and across the street is, um, they used to call it the Beaverton, uh, the bakery. It used to be owned by a Latinx dude. Now it's owned by, I believe, a guy from Iraq, but they still make uh, Tres Leches cake. So you have to go to the Mexican restaurant owned by the Iraqi immigrant to get the best Tres Leches cake in the area. And so I would just say that it's always that. It's just, where else could you tell that story? Yeah, you can imagine how fun that must have been. The, the Mexican baker teaching the Iraqi baker how to make a tres leches cake. I don't know if any of you guys have made a cake like that, but it's pretty intense <laughs> and very delicious, of course. I think everyone's just thinking about tres leches cake now. So <laughs> yeah, was really great Mediterranean food. So you could get really good kebabs there too. So make sure you check it out. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, thank you, Lacey. And uh, we do hope that we can have you here again. And uh, we're so grateful for you taking the time to get to know us. And um, and we do have a, um, we do feel that you do care about every one of us, uh, not just our business, but also uh, us personally. And we're very grateful to be able to trust in your leadership. And, um, and we're just so excited, you know, our first, our first lady um, mayor for the city of Beaverton. This is this is a big, this is a really big thing, and we're all celebrating with you. And uh, we do wish you all the best, and we do hope also that you can count on us as well. And um, and and let's continue to have these conversations. Thank you so much for sharing your cell phone <laughs> so that we can text you and bug you on things. And I think that you're also interested in knowing to know us. Um, so thank you for uh, joining us. And um, I do wish everyone a happy week and a successful week um, with all of your personal and business goals. And, um, and thank you for your time, of course. Thank you, everyone. And we'll see you next week on Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs>